Don't Breathe 2. As you might have guessed, Don't Breathe 2 is the sequel to Don't Breathe. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. It was written by Fede Alvarez and Roto Sayagas and directed by Roto Sayagas. I apologize if I'm butchering that name. That's the best I got. The first one was written by the same people and directed by Fede Alvarez, and this one, they switched. Now, if you're not familiar with this writing duo, they both wrote the Evil Dead 2013 remake and the first Don't Breathe, so they've got two pretty good notches under their belt because those are both pretty good movies. When the first Don't Breathe came out, it was a resounding success. It was a masterclass of tension, suspense, and you really felt like you didn't want to breathe in the theater. This one is a little different. Stephen Lang returns as the blind former Navy SEAL that we saw in the first movie, and he's the only character to return. This movie is its own story that takes place a couple of years down the line. Now I'm going to be a little bit vague about the plot in this review because I don't want to give too much away, but I will do my best. The basics are this, Stephen Lang, and I'm going to call him Stephen Lang because the character is not given a name besides blind guy, so he's going to be Stephen Lang. He and his daughter are living alone, secluded out in the woods, and they have someone else trying to break into their home, for, albeit for a different reason. But it's basically the similar premise in that sense. She's gotten survival training while she grew up, which is very similar to Halloween 2018, so she knows what to do and how to survive when these people break in. And as we already know, Stephen Lang is a complete badass and a terrible person in these movies, but a badass nonetheless. The first movie employed inventive directing techniques, uh, long shots that reveal a lot in a very short amount of time. And this movie tries to do a similar thing. Uh, there is at least one really long take that goes through, which is cool and I can appreciate that. But in the first movie, when it happened, it was setting up a lot of stuff. It was building tension. I didn't really feel that in this one. After a little while in the shot, I was like, wow, it's impressive that we're still going. But I don't know. I didn't feel like that long of a shot was warranted. And I was like, can we get things moving along a little quicker? I don't know. It might be nitpicking. And also, it might just be comparing it too much to Fede Alvarez's style but I felt like it was lacking just a little bit. And as I mentioned before, the tension and suspense that were present in the first movie, I never felt any of that in this one. And I think part of that is because I'm not as attached to the characters in this one as I was in the first. In the first one, uh, the people that were breaking in, Rocky and Dylan Minnette's character, I wish I remembered his name. Way to go, a-hole! Uh, they are ones you care about. Uh, you care that they survive, you are really tense because you want them to get out of there. In this one, we don't get a ton of character development, we get enough to know what's going on and who these characters are, but not enough to make me really, like, care about them. And that's another issue that I have with this movie, is Stephen Lang's character, this movie doesn't add anything to his character. Usually in a sequel we get a little bit more revealed about them, a little more depth, He's basically the same guy he was in the first one. I could have used a little bit more there. I want more. One positive thing I will say is that there were a couple of twists and turns in the plot that I appreciated. I thought I knew exactly where it was going and I was like, wow, this is predictable. And then there were a couple of twists and turns where I was like, oh, okay, this is a little more interesting. I like that. So it definitely kept my interest the whole time, I can say that much. And the fight sequences and the things they do to survive are very cool and well choreographed, so no complaints there. But I will say it suffers from some of the pitfalls of horror sequels in that sometimes it just feels like they say, hey, let's see what kind of inventive weird ways he can kill somebody. In the first one, all of the kills and danger seemed realistic and like, oh, that's probably what would happen in a home invasion gone wrong. In this one, there were a couple more things where it's like, yeah, it's bigger and grander because it's a sequel and we got to make it bigger and grander, but it gets more outlandish and ridiculous. And you're like, wow, that's crazy. It was pretty fun to watch, but a completely different style than the first movie. And I guess that boils down to my biggest issue with this movie. It does not feel like a don't breathe movie. And let me try to qualify what I mean by that. Sometimes in Hollywood, people will write an independent script that is its own story, but then it'll come across somebody's desk and they go, hey, this seems a little bit like Don't Breathe. With just a couple of rewrites and tweaks here and there, we can turn it into a Don't Breathe sequel. It's what happened with Die Hard 3. It was its own movie called Simon Says, or at least that's how the script was written. And people went, you know what? You put Bruce Willis in this, we could make this a Die Hard movie. That's how this movie feels, and I know that's not the case, because it's the same writers. So they clearly 
intended this to be a don't breathe movie the whole time but in terms of tone and execution and stuff it did not feel like the first one at all so it almost just felt like it it could have been its own separate movie just make him not a blind guy and it's it's its own thing basically what i'm saying is the way this movie was executed didn't make it feel like a sequel was warranted with certain sequels such as a quiet place part two the way the story went you felt like okay this sequel was warranted this adds something to the story it feels like it deserved a sequel this one didn't deserve a sequel it, it just doesn't you could have just kept it with the first one and it would have been perfect and this doesn't take away from that, it just seems unnecessary. But like I said before, this movie is interesting and entertaining. It feels like a very low budget horror movie, doesn't feel like it's connected to the first at all, but at least you have fun and it's way more intense than I thought, so at least it, it's got something going for it. When all said and done, Don't Breathe 2 is a fine time, but it could have been a lot better, so I'm gonna give it a 6.7 out of 10. It was okay. Okay. This was the first movie that Roto Sayagas directed, and I will say, Keep an eye out for something else that he does because I think it has a lot of potential. I think he has a lot of potential as a director. This one just didn't quite live up to what I wanted it to be. All right, guys, it's that time of the video where I ask you to like and subscribe if you like this video. I am once again asking for your financial support. It helped the channel out. It makes me happy. And keep checking back for more reviews soon. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.